I get asked quite often, um, where do I get my five rail standard gauge O gauge track? And the answer is I have to assemble it. Um, and this is kind of what it takes. We'll do, we're going to do one piece of curved track. You buy the insulators, you buy the ties, the O gauge ties, and you buy pins. And then you buy the track sizes that you need. We're going to work uh, with this particular piece of track. And if you'll notice, what they give you is this this is a basically an outer rail as far as length and it'll end up going in here and this one is the same length as a center rail and it will go over here and the reason for that is it's amazing the length of the track and the curvature is is quite different from here out to here so we, when I buy it, I get pieces of track that will best fit in the places I'm going to put it. Okay, the first thing I'll do is I'll take and insert a pin into the loose rails. Just push them in place, but then I crimp them. And if you'll notice, this crimping tool might be hard to see. I'll get it down here as close as I can. It has a barb in it, and that barb from the underside of the rail pinches in and locks the track, the pin in place. And got to do some squeezing to to get it done but if you look at it when it's done you see that indentation and that indentation is locking in where this little barb is on the other end and it locks it in place and so here's the other rail To pinch it real hard so to get it locked in place now on this particular size curve um, with the ties that I have existing tie spacing I'm going to add four O gauge ties so the first thing you want to do now is slide your insulators into the center section like that. Make sure they're somewhat centered in the in the tie. And those are ready to install. Okay, here we're going to install the O gauge ties and slip them in over the, you slip them from the bottom up with with the insulator over the coming up from the bottom and then I use a pair of pliers quite simple and I pinch the tabs a little each direction inward that should actually have been each side inward and that kind of keeps the tie from falling off hold the everything in the general area of where I want it yep. drop the top an insulator excuse me Okay, and that 
piece is ready to go. I'll show you what it looks like. All right, there it is assembled with or the ties and insulators are, in, are installed. Okay, and we're ready for the next step. Okay, next step is to lay the ties in and, and I start with doing it I'll make sure these ends down here are lined up evenly. And so it'll look about like that on that end. And then you come over here though and you'll see some overhang. And that'll all have to be cut off a little bit later. Now to support everything I uh, put this square shank chisel underneath the O-gauge tie and that holds it in place uh, when I'm putting downward pressure on it. Now, it'd be kind of hard for me to do this while I'm holding the camera, but I'm going to give you an idea what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in here from each direction and push that tab over with the screwdriver. And I do that on this side and this side. And I'll do that in all four at, uh, all four O gauge ties. Okay. It's going to be a little hard to see down in there, but the tabs have now been bent over. Um, they're not real tight. They're just bent over to kind of get things to hold everything together. And if you take the square the straight end of this chisel and line it up across there, you'll note, see that everything is pretty flush. Uh, the center rail is not quite as far out as the others, but that's the way it came, and uh, that little bit of difference won't hurt anything when everything's put together and running. So the next step is to actually firmly crimp these in place. Well, welcome to my rather... Uh, dirty and cluttered shed um, and the reason we've come out to the shed is for the use of the drill press and what you'll see is I've made a tool and this tool kind of like the crimp tool that I had for the has a couple little barbs on the bottom here and those barbs push down and help lock track to the tie and so I'm going to try and do sorry about this jiggling around um, I'm try and do one of them kind of one-handed here and you can see what we do you want to get the tool needs to be close to centered on the barb and I just bring it down and I give a good tight push and you can see how that locks it in place and then we slide it over and do again my apologies hard to do this work the drill press and hold the camera but you'll get the idea okay and that's that's what I do now I'll continue to do this on the other three ties and when done these will be locked in place pretty tight now I tend to not pinch the center rail ones because from the factory you know because this was already installed on the standard gauge track from the factory and it's already crimped over here and what I found is uh, myself and my partner have managed to cause a lot of shorts over crimping it so as long as they're pinched in there pretty snugly with the pliers it'll keep the rail centered so i don't tend to use the tool now to uh, crimp the center rail just the uh, just the o-gauge sections okay all four ties are now crimped in place uh, the, the O-gauge ties that we've added to hold the track. And then we're almost there. 
Now we've got to take care of this down at the end, which is the uneven links. Okay, now most of you guys that putter around with trains will definitely recognize this tool, and that is a Dremel tool. And in this case, I've got one of the fiber cutoff wheels, and that's what we're going to do here is cut these long pieces off. Now, I'm not going to show much of this on the camera mainly because I don't want the sparks to fly and get on the lens because that it will they'll be red hot and they'll screw up my camera but just come in here to the where you want them and you'll do that now I'm not going to show you any more than that but I'll show you the finished piece I don't want like I said don't want to damage the camera well there you go see those are cut off and you can see the rim that's on the end, and they're pretty nice and straight. And uh, we'll now have one complete piece of track. The one final step, and I won't necessarily show it on, on video, but I, I have a benchtop grinder with a wire wheel. And I'm going to take this over on that wire wheel and hit those cut rail ends, um, take the burrs off of them. Okay, I'm not going to wall it up. They won't show up. Those are nice and clean now. The burrs have been knocked off on the wire wheel. And this piece is done and ready to go. All I need to do is a, about another 20 or 30 more of this size and then move on to the next size. And then the straights.